to stay at home day because there's always more to the story. James White. My man, Brother White, how you doing? Good morning. I am. Good morning. I'm I'm doing good. A lot has been going on, and I want to take us in a a slightly different direction uh, because one of the things that's interesting is part of what's going. There's so much going on in our world. I wanted to talk to you all on Monday, but I didn't get a chance to to call in. But my mind is now going back to my childhood. It was in 1970 when I saw in a magazine, a picture of the global sport of football. Mm. The global sport of football, which really we call soccer. And no one played oh. soccer in Barco, North Carolina. But <laughs> I was intrigued and became a fan of Brazil because I saw a picture of the superstar Pelé as he led uh, his team, sure. Brazil, to their third World Cup title. And from that point on in 1970, I rocked the blue, I mean the green and yellow jersey representing <laughs> Brazil. Wow. Because for me, that was one of the first time I saw a black person from African descent representing a sport that wasn't football, basketball, baseball, or track. Right. Now, I've talked about this before, but every Thanksgiving, and man, I had some incredible food this Thanksgiving, <laughs> but every Thanksgiving that I've got to endure cowboy fans. And I <laughs> still <laughs> cannot Joy figure Club. out. Here I am what a great in thing. North Carolina, and so many family and friends love the Dallas Cowboys. But mm. then I realized that it wasn't simply the Dallas Cowboys but they were America's team, but they were black America's team. Mm. And maybe it was because there were so many black players that filled significant roles. There was Bullet Bob Hayes. There was Drew and Preston Pearson. There was Ed Tudal Jones. But I think the moment that really was interesting in America is when Roger Staubach threw Drew Pearson a pass in 1975. And you see a white man, literally, and a black man, and a team creating a moment of unity that was victory for everyone. Well, in the 1970s, that was a whole new story because football in that moment was always more than a game. Mm. Now, when we talked about HBCUs, and now we're focusing on HBCUs with the resurgence of Coach Deion Sanders and, hey, where will he go next? But many of us forget that we've been cheering for HBCUs a long time because that's the place where black leadership was nurtured. And when black men were struggled to be recognized as leaders in the quarterback position, it was HBCUs that produced many black quarterbacks. We will all know that Doug Williams, the first black quarterback in 1988 to win a Super Bowl, graduated from Grambling. Yep. Mm -hmm. Again, because when we watched that, it was more than just a game. Well, now we're watching the World Cup. And, yes, we're cheering for the U.S. men's team, who beat Iran 1-0, tied with England, and now will face the Netherlands. But this is a team representing the USA, 12 black players on the roster, who are having to answer the question that an Iranian journalist posed to the 23-year-old team captain, Tyler Adams. And he answered the question that many of our listeners have to answer every day. Mm. Why in the world are you dealing with a world that wasn't designed by you or designed for you? And here's the question. Do you feel uneasy representing a country that has a history of discrimination? Listen, his answer was brilliant. There's discrimination everywhere, at least in the USA we're making progress. Mm. Yes. We all will be cheering for the U.S. team. But here's a team where Tim Way was born in Brooklyn, a Jamaican mother and a father who is currently the president of Liberia, where Eunice mm. Musha has Ghanaian parents and grew up in Italy and England. Yes, the U.S. team has Kelly Acosta, whose paternal grandmother was Japanese. Shaq Moore, born in Georgia and moved to Spain at age 18. Cameron Carter Vickers grew up in England and father played pro basketball and his mother's from Essence. 
Oh. Haji Wright wow. is born in Los Angeles, the parents of Liberian and Ghanaian descent. And DeAndre Yellen, born in Seattle, but raised by a Jewish mother, the United States of America soccer team, representing the United States. Maybe what Dr. King said, we're seeing it with our own eyes, that we may have all come on different ships, but now we're in the same boat. Yes, we all should be cheering for the United States soccer team. They are representing the black gasping reality of this country, and it's reminding us all that it's more than just the game because there's always more to the story. There it is. Good and I, I tell you, Brother White, there you definitely is. gave us more to that story. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. And the research that you put in, man, was, was impeccable. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. And by the way, a big-time victory for the USA yesterday, uh, de- defeating uh, Iran, or Iran, depends on how you pronounce mm-hmm. it. And uh, so thank you for br- bringing that to light. I had no idea. That's why we love you on this show. Absolutely. Because <laughs> you're always bringing <laughs> something that we never even knew about. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much thank for you. your time. You can call Appreciate anytime. You, you, don't, you, know, you don't have to wait. You, you don't have to wait to Wednesday. You can you call, call every day. You want to. You can call. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> you